Hello, this is Dr. Dave Gatros. Uh, what we're doing today is looking at how to compile C++ programs in a Unix environment. A uh, very handy thing to know how to do because a lot of times when you're downloading a package um, you have to compile that package in order to actually use it on your machine so it's uh, native to your architecture. This is also a very handy thing to know how to do in, in classes that you're probably taking right now, object-oriented programming or data structures, uh, maybe in the future semesters. Well, here's what I have. Uh, I have actually set up a small object-oriented um, example. It's a very, very simple class. There's a main routine, main.cpp. Okay, it's a simple class. It includes time.h. And basically what it does is it keeps tracks of uh, a time stamp and allows you to set it and print it. It's the only two options in it. That's the main routine. Let's look at the header file, time.h. This is the definition of the class. There's if not defined, time.h. It uh, prevents the class from being defined multiple times. That if not defined, defined, and then the end if at the end. This tells what the public and private interface is. The public interface is I can call the constructor to create the object, set the time to print it, and then the private is keeping track of the hour, the minute, the second. And then the implementation. This is what the code that actually makes the class work. There's the constructor up there. The constructor I pass in the hour, minute, second, and essentially just turns around and calls set time, which uh, checks to make sure that the uh, uh, hours, minutes, and seconds are within range and then sets them. And then there's the print time which actually prints it out. And um, a, a very simple class and this class is all over the internet. You can find it in several books. I just uh, wrote it from memory last night. Um, Alright, well how do you compile it? Well, well we can do the brute force method. The brute force method is to just do the separate files themselves and that's done like this. It's g plus plus dash c time dot h. We do the header file just to check it for syntax. Uh, we can actually skip this step and just do the dot cpp. But I always do it because if there's a syntax error in the header file, I want to see it separately. No fault, no errors. G plus plus dash c. Then I do the implementation file and I do them in this order. No errors right there. Now whenever I do the the time dot cpp. It creates two other files. It creates an intermediate uh, output file .o and another intermediate file gch which it needs to actually create the uh, intermediate file. We're going to leave those alone just now. Now I'm going to compile the main routine. Now there's, I have two options to do this. I'll show you one it is uh, dash o main.cpp and then time.o. This is uh, a compile and link together. Here what I'm doing is I'm compiling the uh, program. Let me go back and correct this. I'm naming it main. That's the .o uh, option. I'm compiling main.cpp and I have to include the intermediate output object in that because this is called a compile and link. Now the way it's normally done is this way and this is the way we'll do it we compile the main routine just like we did the others as an as a only compile only not a link that's the dash c option we're checking it for errors now I want to put it all together it's done like this dash or g plus plus dash o main and I have to include main dot o and time dot o the intermediate output optics that's going to com uh, link them all together now I have the routine, I say main, and you see it prints out 12.30 and 10.30, which are the two times that I put in there. It worked quite nicely. Alright, that's option one, is to do them separately like that. The second way to do it is realizing that it's the same commands you're going to type over and over again. You're just going to put those in a script. So let me go to Emacs. This is a full screen editor. I've got my tunneler turned on. Compile.sh. And we'll put it in the background. Okay, so here it is. Here's my file. Simplest way, you notice I just put the uh, commands in there. And while I'm at it, I went down here and I removed the intermediate output files. I don't need them once I've compiled the program, so I just get rid of them. 
Okay, the four lines of code, time.h, time.cpp, main, and then link them all together. Okay. Let me save that. It's already saved, there's no changes to it. Okay. Clear. Now I'll just say compile.sh. Boom, there it is. Now you notice it doesn't output any uh, uh, error messages or anything like that. And if it would, if it was, um, uh, if there were errors in the code, but that's the simplest way to do it. That's not the way they're going to want you to do it in other uh, classes. They want you to use what's called a make file. Now you're going to use the make utility. Okay. The make utility requires a file inside your directory called make file, and the make file can either be M A K E F I L E, upper or lowercase m. Ours are lowercase m. Let me look at the make file and show you what it looks like. And for um, problems you're going to have where you've only got three files, a main routine and a class, this make file will work quite nicely and you can copy it just by replacing the names of your files with the names that are in here. Your main routine, I call it main, you would replace that with yours. And the class, this one's time, you replace every place where you have time with the name of your class. And this should work quite nicely. I have a main routine. This main is the executable file. It's dependent upon two files, main.o and time.o. If either of those are out of date, it will execute this code right here. If main.o is out of date, which it sees by looking at main.cpp, it will compile, use this code. If either time.h or time.cpp have been changed, okay, it will compile this code and it does it in a tree fashion. So therefore if only the main routine had been changed it will not recompile time.h or time.cpp which makes it much much more efficient. Okay so let me uh, remove main main and uh, all the intermediate files are gone clear and all I gotta do is say make and boom it creates it. Okay. Make the make utility goes out, finds the make file, and executes the script. Run main, and there's my time. So this is how you uh, compile uh, code in uh, C++ on a Unix machine. Very very handy to know how to do it. Uh, run this uh, video over a few times. Um, to uh, see how it's done, and I'll, let me put the make file make file up there again. This is the simplest form of the make file uh, that you can have. Uh, take this one down again. You're going to want to change uh, if your main routine is labeled something else. You're going to change every place that you have main. You're going to want to change that name to it. And your class. This one is time. Replace the word time with every place that you see the word time. The other options that you can have is you don't have to remove the intermediate files, the .o and the .gch. It's just something that I I did in this just to show you that you can do it. The other thing you might want to know too is, and let me go into Emacs um, make file. <coughs> show you something. Okay. What you can't see is that right here in front of the uh, lines of code that actually execute, there's a tab character. So whenever I want to make sure that there's executable code, like say uh, after this uh, this uh, main right here, I have to put a tab character in front of here to let the make utility you know this is executable code. That's the only other key to it. So once you get your make utility run, make sure that these tab characters in here, and you just you just put a tab character right there. There's a tab character right here. That's the only other thing that you might run into tr trouble with. Hope this helps you. Good video. Uh, we'll save it. And uh, good luck.